So we can also find the heat of reaction from standard enthalpies of formation. So there are tables of these numbers. There's one within the chapter. There's a larger one at the back of your book. And there's ginormous ones in the CRC. Um, or you can also find them online. So delta H is the change in enthalpy. We can define zero to be a convenient place. We have arbitrarily decided that we're going to call sea level zero elevation because it's convenient, right? We can't, well, I guess we could now, but, you know, in the past, we couldn't really measure the distance we are from the center of the earth. That's really what elevation is, right? So we just arbitrarily decided that sea level was zero, and we're going to measure everything in reference to that. So for enthalpy, we're, we're looking at changes, and it's a state function, and so we're just going to decide where zero is. And so we've decided that we're going to measure enthalpy relative to the enthalpies of pure elements in their standard states. What does that mean? The standard state is a state of material at a defined set of conditions. So for a gas, the standard state is the pure gas at exactly one atmosphere of pressure. For a liquid or a solid, standard state is the pure substance in its most stable form at exactly one atmosphere of pressure and the temperature of interest, which is usually 25 degrees Celsius. If you have a substance that's in solution, sodium chloride dissolved in water, the standard state is the substance in solution with a concentration of exactly one mole per liter. Now, not all so substances can be in that high concentration, but that's the point of reference. So standard enthalpy change is the enthalpy change um, that you see when all the reactants and products are in their standard states. So when we add this little um, degree symbol here, that indicates we're talking about standard states. Standard enthalpy of formation is the enthalpy change for the reaction forming one mole of a pure compound from its constituent elements. Those elements have to be in their standard states. For pure elements in their standard states, the heat of, standard heat of formation is zero because that's where we're measuring them from. So here's an example of an enthalpy of formation table. This is the one that's within the chapter. So here's bromine. That's an element, bromine liquid. That is its standard state. It's a liquid at room temperature. And so its heat of formation is zero. Um, Bromine atoms in the gas state, that's not the most stable form of the element, and so that has a heat of formation that is not zero. And here's a compound, HBr in the gas state. Um, forming that from elements in their standard states, the change is minus 36.3. So we, we've got several different elements listed here and also several different compounds. So we can use these. Uh, to calculate delta H's. So standard enthalpy of formation, also called standard heat of formation. Um, standard enthalpies of formation for elements are zero. It's like being at sea level, and we're just measuring everything from that point. For most compounds, not all of them, but for most compounds, delta, the heat of formation is negative. Um, it's like being below sea level. It's just below the established zero. A negative heat of formation means that when that is formed, energy is released, right? Um, that tends to be a spontaneous process. Um, formation reactions. Um, if we look at methane and we want to know um, the enthalpy of formation or the heat of formation for methane. 
we're going to look at um, combining the elements in their most standard states. So here, carbon, and the standard state for carbon is solid as graphite. It can also be solid as a diamond, but that's not the most stable state. Plus hydrogen gas. So the most stable, the standard state for hydrogen is H2 in the gas state. We combine those to get methane. Now what's important about these formation reactions, and it's a little funky, is that we're always getting one mole of a pure compound. And so sometimes you end up with coefficients that are fractions. If you're not sure which of the states of elements is the standard state, when you look in that table, find the one that's zero. Let's go back and look at that. So carbon, there are two forms of elemental carbon listed here, graphite and diamond. One of them has a heat of formation of zero and one has a heat of formation of 1.88. This is not the standard state. The standard state has zero. So you can find the standard states from the table by just identifying which one is zero. So when we write a formation reaction, here is one for carbon monoxide, we have to have the two elements and we have to have them in their standard states. So for carbon, we just looked at that, the most standard, the standard state is solid slash comma graphite as opposed to diamond. For oxygen, it's not oxygen atoms, it's oxygen molecules. Let's go back to the table again. So for oxygen, here's O2 in the gas state, that's where the zero is. So that means that we have to have O2. Is this a balanced chemical equation? No, it isn't. Because we've got one carbon and one carbon, that's fine, but we have two oxygens here and one oxygen there. Normally when we balance equations, we would put a two here and a two there and call it good. But we have to end up with one mole of product. So then we end up with half a mole of oxygen because we're forming one carbon dioxide. Where do we get this number? It's in the table. Back to the table again. So carbon compounds, carbon monoxide gas, the heat of formation is minus 110.5. That's where that number came from. So I'm making this formation reaction. This is the, the thing I'm interested in. The, the, um, the question would have been write um, an equation, a formation equation for CO. And so I, I have to have elements in their standard states. I have to have the coefficient on my product as one. These coefficients are going to be whatever is needed to balance the equation. These have heats of formation of zero, and so I look this up in the table, and this is the standard heat of formation for carbon monoxide. Now, why might you want to do that? Well, so you can combine equations with Hess's law and get what you need. So let's just write um, some equations for sodium chloride and for lead nitrate. Write equations for the formation of these compounds from the elements in their standard states and include the values for delta H formation. Okay, so for sodium chloride, I want to end up with, oh, I don't want green. I want blue. I want to end up with sodium chloride in the solid state. The two elements involved are sodium and chlorine, right? So I've got sodium and I've got chlorine. 
I need to know what their standard states are, though. So I have to go look at the table. Whoops. For sodium, the one that has zero is sodium as a solid. For chlorine, um, here's chlorine atom. That's not zero. The chlorine molecule, Cl2. So it's sodium solid and Cl2 in the gas state. That's not balanced, right? I need to have only one chlorine. Instead of multiplying sodium and sodium chloride by two, I multiply this by one half. Because if I have one half of a Cl2, that gives me this. Everybody okay with that? Now I need to go over here again and look up the heat of formation for sodium chloride. Minus 411.2. So delta H standard formation is minus 411.2 kilojoules. I think it was kilojoules, wasn't it? Kilojoules per mole. Okay. Any questions about that one? So if I'm going to do lead nitrate, I want to end up with Pb and O3, 2, solid. I've got three elements, lead, nitrogen, and oxygen. So I've got lead. Nitrogen and oxygen. I need to go to the table and look up the standard states. Um, great, lead isn't in there. Uh, nitrogen is N2 in the gas state, oxygen is O2 in the gas state. Um, if you go to the larger table and look up lead, it'll be a solid. Just think about it. What, what, what's the state of lead at room temperature? Is it a solid, a liquid, or a gas? It's a solid. And is it a diatomic element? No, it's a metal. So that's going to be S. This is going to be N2 in the gas state, and this is going to be O2 in the gas state. State symbols are important here. Now we need to balance this without changing the coefficient on this one. How many nitrogens do I have in one unit of this? Two. Well, that works out nicely. I've got two over here. How many oxygens in one unit? Six. So if I put a three here, then I'll have six oxygens. Is balancing equation, but with a little twist because this has to be zero. I mean one. This has to be one at the end. Now we need delta H, so fabulous. That's not in here at all. What they put this as an example in the book for anyway. Okay, so a helpful student looked this up. Now you have to read it to me again, though. Minus 451.9. Minus 451.9. Thank you. Minus 451.9 kilojoules per mole. Um, Siri looked it up for me as well, but she did it in kilocalories, and I don't want to convert. So this is in the larger table in the appendix at the back of your book, as is the standard state for lead. Any questions? Okay, so why, why would we even need this? Um, we can calculate the standard heat of reaction um, 
from the elements to the compound. Okay, and so we can treat these standard heats of formation just like we treated any heats of reaction. If you decompose the compound into elements, you just change the sign. So what we're doing is we're mentally decomposing the reactants into elements and then forming the products from their elements. And so we can use the heats of formation to find the heat of reaction for anything that we want. Any reaction can be written as the sum of formation reactions or the reverse of formation reactions for the reactants and products. Um, this method here simplifies the whole process because you don't actually have to mess around with individual reactions. So the idea here is that the heat of reaction, the standard heat of reaction, is the sum of the heat of formation values for each of the component reactions. And so we come up with this unwieldy looking equation. Standard heat of reaction is the sum of the coefficient times the heat of reaction for the products minus the coefficients the sum of the coefficients times the heat of reactions for each of the reactants. Okay, so that's probably not real clear yet. Let's look at this example. Here is the combustion of methane. So methane reacting with oxygen form carbon dioxide and water. We want to know what's the standard heat of reaction for that. What we're doing in this process is that we are saying, well, what if we took this apart into its elements, and we took this apart into its elements, those would be um, the opposite of the heats of formation, and then we're making this from its elements, and we're making that from its elements. When we do that, here we have carbon and hydrogen forming CH4. So that's making this one from its elements. The heat of formation for that is this. Um, over here, this is an element, so we don't have to mess with him at all. Over here, carbon dioxide. Well, if we write the reaction, the formation reaction, we've got uh, carbon as graphite plus oxygen making CO2. And we, we can look up the heat of formation for that. And then here we have water. Well, the heat of formation for water would, uh, the reaction includes hydrogen plus half of oxygen, and we can look this up. So if we want to see the heat for the whole reaction up here, we're adding, in, adding up what's going on here. So we're decomposing the CH4. So we take the heat of formation and we change the sign. And so that's plus 74.6. And then we're forming CO2, that's this amount of energy, and we're forming water, and that's this amount of energy. But with the water, we're forming two moles. So this gets multiplied by two. So we have, this is the sum of the products times their coefficients. So it's two times this. Well, they already did it for us here. Two times this plus this. And then we're subtracting the reactants. That's just a really horrible explanation. I'm sorry. Let's look at this one. Thermite reaction. Powdered aluminum reacts with iron oxide, highly exothermic. Use standard enthalpies of formation to find the heat of reaction for the thermite reaction. So in practice, this is how we do it. And um, if you have your textbook, please go back to that heat of formation table because we're going to need those numbers. So the standard heat of reaction for this is going to be the heat of formation for Al2O3 um, I'm just going to call it Al2O3. 
plus two times the heat of formation of iron because there's two of those. And that is, now we're going to subtract the heat of formation for aluminum. What's the heat of formation for aluminum solid? Zero, but, and this one. So it's the reactants minus the products. It's kind of a common thing. Like when we do delta, it's always final minus initial. So what is the heat of formation for AL? Oh, question. Why is there two ions in the product and not two in the um, Well, I, I should have a two here. Does that help? Okay, yeah, I forgot that. Um, this is two aluminums, and so we need two times the heat of formation of aluminum. And this is two, so we need the two here. So the heat of formation for Al2O3 as a solid, does somebody have that looked up? Minus 1675.7. 1675.7. That's kilojoules, right? So then we need two times the heat of formation of iron as a solid, which if you look it up, you find out that's zero, because that is iron in its standard state. And then we're subtracting two times the heat of formation of aluminum in its solid state. That's also zero. Plus the heat of formation of Fe2O3. Minus 824.2 kilojoules. Be careful with your negative signs. One six, negative 160. 1675.7 plus 0 minus 2 minus a negative 824.2. And I'm coming up with negative 851.5 kilojoules. I'm looking up the standard heats of formation for the product, for each of the products. If there's a coefficient, you have to multiply the heat of formation by that coefficient. I add those up. That's this part. I subtract the heats of formation for the reactants. Because if I was using Hess's law, what I'm doing is I'm taking the heats of formation for these backwards because I'm what I'm imagining is I'm taking these down to their elements in their standard states. So this would be iron and oxygen. To take that apart is negative of the heat of formation. And then from all the elements, I'm putting these back together. Any questions? That was as clear as mud. Oh, there's another one. Dang, I wanted to finish this chapter. Mm, we'll do this one later.